Ooh. That was hype, no? Was that hype, no? Yes. That was hype, especially for today. How we doing? We got one competitor to my right getting that refuel in with the hydration. We got Boomer Boys versus Sunnyside Varsity. And then also we have Sunnyside JV up against Free Agents. And they're basically going to battle it out to see who gets site selection in the playoffs. And Boomer Boys and Sunnyside Varsity are trying to see if they could get on the... Opposite side of a GCG, right? Or anyway, they're they're getting opposite side anyway, is right? Yeah. So Sunnyside and Boomer Boys are for sure um, gonna be on the opposite side of the bracket. Uh huh. Okay. But they're essentially playing for second place, so for a buy. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So there we have it, folks. Hello, I am Fantastic Fat Man on the ones and twos, and who do I have here to my left? Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> how we doing how we doing here let's let's get let's get a little bit more in if you want oh, no not scoot in but like oh oh okay okay hey you in there dog i'm in there i'm in there oh yeah and we got a nice set of games for us today like i said sunnyside varsity they did run rampant on boomer boys the first time they met uh we'll see if they could go ahead and get the same thing i know they're they're uh roll swapping tom tom <laughs> They're roll swapping Tom quite a bit, so we'll see where they put him. If they're gonna go ahead and try the same uh, the, the the same strategy they have against you, where they put Tom into the jungle roll. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll see if they go ahead and try to nullify Dark Blaze the same way. I think they had a little bit of success, right? Yeah. Fizz definitely had a lot more success than I thought he should have. Yeah, definitely. And here, thank you, Gooch Pooch. The tier one sub. Yeah, and he's in the game. He is in Boomer Boys. Alright, getting it started. So, yeah, we can look at the playoff stage. Lunch. Sorry about that, we're getting it all sorted out. We're trying to see if they're gonna go pro draft or if they are not. I didn't hear that, Alan W. Should be on there. One moment. It's on there. Can you hear it? Mm -hmm. Did you? I don't think so. It usually comes up on our headphones. I wonder if the viewers at home did see it. So let's say no pro draft here. We're really gonna gonna go for it. Oh man, hold the Tom Bucks, Gooch Pooch. I will redeem your Allen W. Remember that we owe forty nine ninety nine to the Gooch Pooch. <laughs> yeah. You get paid back double. Don't worry. All right. Let's go ahead and break down this matchup we have here. Sunnyside Varsity versus the Boomer Boys. What are we look? What are we looking for? What so, are, what, what are we hoping to see? So we're looking for them to execute the same thing that they did last time, right? Down top, focus on strong laner, have mm -hmm. and complete balling kind of on an axis. And varying the Gooch Bridge, I think they have a bit. They have a hard time kind of trying to dominate. They will never lose you the game, but I don't think they'll necessarily ever win. Or who? The side of Boomer Boys. Oh, okay. The good bridge. Mm -hmm. Like, they'll win you a game late game, but, like, to a hard stomp laning phase, I don't think we see that too often. And it's not because they don't have the ability to. I think it's they just don't really push their early advantage as hard as possible. Mm -hmm. So, the bot lane of Sunnyside has a fine time. Oh, looks like... Rihanna, Rihanna band, or Sunnyside Varsity, and then on the other side we see band. I think Sun Headpats just this temple hard count um, acolytes type of playstyle. Yeah, acolyte likes to go ahead and sit around in the lane. Uh, sit around in the lane. Uh, he wants to go ahead and play it passively, just CS. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, Saint Headpass doesn't want to do any of that. He just wants to fight, 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 yeah. go full aggression, and then beat Acoly- <laughs> beat Acolyte or his enemy mid laner in in duels. So that's why the Yone comes in clutch. Yasuo, Aatrox, anything he could go ahead and get his hands on, where the lane, where the way the champion gets his advantage is to fight. That's the way Saint Headpass likes to likes to roll. It shouldn't be. I don't think Exen right to play it. Shen. Okay. I think first picking Shen, I think we're getting to the point where we kind of understand Shen's weaknesses. Gotta speak so, louder. Uh, I think we're getting to a point for AoE that we're kind of understanding Shen's weaknesses, right? Yeah. And <clears throat> I feel like first picking Shen is just really ambitious at this point. It It is a good takeaway from the side of Boomer Boys, but this has no issue. Just plays another tank jungler. We saw Poppy yesterday. We see the Zion today. Um, did have some success at Worlds. We'll see if we see some success from Scion today. We see Sivir picked up. Sivir does get picked up for the side of Boomer Boys. Are they going to go ahead and uh, move over Tom to the ADC? Is this kind of like a flex type of thing? I mean, they do have the ability to do that, right? Yeah, but we're not using Pro Draft, so... I mean, obviously, this is exactly what we would see in Pro Draft, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, most likely, Sivir is getting picked up for the bot side of Boomer Boys. Darkblaze going for the Lee Sin again. I think that might be a little detrimental, only because Tom is in the jungle, so he will know how to play against it or around it. Tom is a jungle main. It really depends what set head pads picks. Yeah, they saw the Samir hover. I think Samir would do great here. They don't go for this, you know, go for Udyr instead. Yeah. Wait till Sunnyside finishes the draft to talk a bit about this. Um, <laughs> All right, go ahead. Go ahead. Speculation for the other side. Um, I don't know what they would pick here. Oriana is banned. Uh, Blitzcrank gets picked up here. I I don't think the Blitzcrank is the pick you want to go into the to the into Sunnyside Varsity. You mm-hmm. see the Udyr. You see the Lisa. And there's not not many people you can actually like land a devastating hook on, but. If it's a comfort pick, it's a comfort pick. It's starting to get to the point where Gooch Pooch is going onto the Blitzcrank when we're gone and Leon is banned. Yeah, so it's looking like it's, he's he, that's that's his next comfort pick. Yeah, to show that, out. That's what it does look like. They ban the Graves. I don't necessarily think jungle bans are where are where you want to go against Boomer Boys because Tom's champion champion pool is extremely big. Mm-hmm. So it does feel extremely pointless trying to ban him out. I always like picking up the solo laners first, right? Because if, if you ban out the solo laners, jungle is impacted from solo laners. So there's only so much they can do. Yeah, exactly. And then plus, Acolyte has some of those comfort picks still available. I think the only threat they see is Orianna, though. So if anything, they might be thinking, hey, who, who do we not want to see on the map, right? Yeah, definitely. And then we see the top lane bans. They probably think the Shen is a support pick. I don't think this time around it will be. That's just a hunch. I actually don't have any insider knowledge if he'll be top lane this time around, but I have a feeling they're kind of tired of the Shen support, but we'll see if I'm wrong. Yeah, <clears throat> I don't think Shen uh, into Scion is too good. Not the best. We see Victor being picked up here. Wow. Shen, Shen does have the health percent damage, though. But yeah, Victor being picked up for Acolyte. What? We see the hover Syndrome? of just mages, by the way, so... Really interesting to see. We see the Corky lock in. Oh, they have a sub today. Yeah, it is Eggs and Rice's brother. Oh, okay. No Space Ninjas? No Space Ninjas. He had something to attend to, unfortunately. We see the set. Huh. We see Galio being hovered. Corky. Uh. What's going on here? Is he, cor- is he going Corky bot lane? Maybe. I haven't seen that since. Since. <laughs> When was he at ADC? Long, long time ago, no? Since Nam, man. Since Nam? Since Nam. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been too long. Bring uh, me back. I have not seen Corky in the bot lane, but if there's anyone to bring him in, it's definitely uh, Sunnyside Varsity. Sunnyside Varsity's comp looks a little bit like... Uh, contradicting. I actually don't think it's contradicting at all. I think everyone wants to just go in into the back lane. I think Sivir and Victor are going to have a tough time to deal with this. You see the Wukong definitely going to go into the jungle. Tom is picking it up. And Vari going with another mage bottom. I don't... Oh, no. It's going to be Bring Ghetto playing... Or Acolyte, sorry. Playing the Victor. 
controlling with that blitz, Victor. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> One thing I'm looking forward to from the side of Sunnyside Varsity is really them uh, getting those rotations, those 2v2s, those 3v2s, those 2v1 type of scenarios. Hey, thank you, Chesie. Head jam? Don't know what that is, sorry. It's an email. It's an email? Email, yeah. Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Not too familiar with Twitch uh, chat still. Apologize. All right. So it looks like we have here... Oh, you said it was an engaging comp. They just want to go ahead and go in. Udyr against the Victor. That's not gonna. Ha he's not gonna have a great time against them. There's, there's really no. There's really no counterplay to it. You know what I mean? I think Udyr what loses ten out of <laughs> ten out of ten. I disagree. So, so the reason why Udyr is so strong is he's just been getting so many buffs throughout these past two years, and so many other champions have been getting nerfs. So why Udyr is becoming really popular right now um, in solo laners, and there's a GM Udyr one trick, top lane one trick, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why he's getting a lot of popularity is because he can, um, there's a phrase that they use called stat check. He can stat check a lot of the enemy champions, and to my understanding what that means is like, since he has so much free stats in his kit, he can abuse the champions that, although scale better, he has so many, like... Um, stats free into his kit with the turtle shield, with the movement speed on the bear stance, the extra damage on the Q, and then Phoenix stance, the wave clear, right? Mm -hmm. It feels really oppressive to face early on. Oh. Uh, because you can't do anything early against it because you don't have items to keep up with him. Mm -hmm. So it becomes super, super oppressive, and we'll see how Sun Headpats decides to play it. Usually, um, I can't remember the Korean top laner's name, but he goes heal and ghost. And he essentially just goes in, E someone, the entire team tries turning on him, he pops ghost, or he just like pops ghost, and he runs away. And then they try catching him, they're like, okay, leave the Udyr alone, let's just focus on the other people in the team fight. And then as soon as he notices that, he just runs back in, and <laughs> stuns another person, and then runs back out. And you can't kill him, because <laughs> he just bears in turtle stances, bears in turtle stances. And then once people try ignoring him, right, he just gets Phoenix stance, and he just starts like farming all the waves super fast. So it's like, okay, guys, we have to respond to this Udyr eventually. And he goes oh. Archangels as well to get the shield from the Jade Goddess. Okay, okay. But, I mean, Udyr, I understand him stat-checking champions in the top lane because you have that bush, you have the alcove to really take advantage of the positioning in the lane. Yeah. But in the mid lane, unless Eggs and Rice rotates, you really think he's going to go into the mid lane and leave Send Headpats up in the top? I don't know. That's a potential, but then you're leaving eggs and rice to hang out and dry. Because in the mid lane, Uyr, he has to run like face first into the Victor, right? Yeah. And Victor can act like he's, he's not going to stand there and just auto. He's going to definitely kind of tight his way back, especially with the Q shield and the empowered auto. Yeah, we're going to see if he goes for the phase rush, right? Acolyte yeah. would have to, absolutely have to go phase rush. And if he doesn't go phase rush, I think he's going to have a very hard time. But if he does... It's going to be up to the Udyr to be able to play through those timing windows, right? When the phase rush is down. Yeah. So I think it depends how they play the matchup. I think it'll be very sad for Victor to build full AP and have the Udyr just build, like, Spectral's Cal, Merc Treads, and still clear the wave just as fast as Victor. Oh, okay. So just go full defensive, have to face take the damage, and then uh, make sure he clears the wave ASAP yeah. before he gets too low. Oh, man. I don't know. That's kind of disheartening to see the Udyr, but hopefully it works out. Maybe he'll shut me up. Hopefully he It'll does. It'll either be really good or really bad. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Meanwhile, in the bot lane, it is a Blitzcrank and Sivir. Oh, Corky. my God. What was that? Oh, let's, let's go ahead and show the people at home. What I just saw. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two big things here. Yeah. Comment on Corky. Yeah. Not a fan at all. And phase rush barrier heal Udyr. <laughs> Woo! This can go either really bad or really good. Hopefully, for Sunnyside Varsity's sake, it is extremely good. <laughs> yeah. Here, we're already going in. One moment. Oh, I loaded up so quick, only for us to just kind of sit here. Oh, oh. Why uh, we see why we're sitting here is because the pause came out instantly, we see. Alright. 
Move it on back so we can go ahead and look at it closely. Anything you notice that's a little weird besides the Udyr with barrier heal? You know what? Let me do a quick scan because my eyes immediately went there and they cannot get off of that Udyr. <laughs> There's really nothing else. Uh, one thing I'm truly interested in is the interactions with the Justice Punch and then the pull, the rocket grab from Gooch Pooch, Blitzcrank. Mm -hmm. uh, which one will go through? Let's say he's already charging it up. He bat he does the backup to charge forward. I'm mm -hmm. speaking of the Galio's Justice Punch. Yeah. Is, is, if he's launching forward, is the, is the rocket grab going to get nullified by that? Or is he still going to get yanked? I think like, he still gets yanked. Like, who gets prio in that interaction? I, I think how it works is... I've, I've seen this very few times, but I think the Galio, like... Still does the motion, but then after it's done, gets pulled. Oh, wow. I think that's how it works. We'll see. Hopefully we see it this game and we get a... Nice look at that? <laughs> yeah, we get a nice look at it where we can actually be able to replay it, right? Yeah, another person who has a dash uh, to try to get away from that Waraki grab is uh, Corky. He has his W, he's going to be able to get out of there. It's, it's a well-distanced W, but I don't think it's going to work the same way as uh, Ezreal E does, right? Yeah, it doesn't. So he has to do it very preemptively, and it costs a lot of mana. He's hovered it right there, 100 mana. What's his base? Oh, wow, yeah, 350 yeah, base mana. Yeah, it's one-third of his mana. That's a... <laughs> That's a definitely life-or-death situation. Goosh mm -hmm. getting aggressive right there. Five point. Gonna look... Oh, I think a flash or flash there is always worth, right? Yeah, definitely. But depending what Lee Sin started, you, you don't know if he started W, right? So if he would have flashed, he could have just ward hopped. Yeah, but then... I feel like... Oh, yeah, You're testing their mechanics, but... Yeah, that's possible. Not everyone is willing to look like an idiot sometimes, you know? Because if, if it works, it'd be like, oh my god, Gooch is insane. But if it fails, it's like, what is Gooch Bridge doing? You just place it flat. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's true. That's it's like true. those type of plays. Like, I don't see too many people in AOE try to go for those type of plays. It does feel bad when you mess up, <laughs> and everyone's just like, "That's just a terrible play." But the junglers are starting on the red buff side. Each one, Tom, is on the Wukong, so we'll be going for those single target camps. Yeah. So. Yeah, I was gonna say Wolves definitely a friend to those who can't really clear camps too well. What's who? Blue Gromp. Yeah, Eggs and Rice and Sis ex teammates from AoE Draft 2 facing each other off in the top lane. Never thought I would see that, but it's pretty interesting that they're facing off. Who do you think who do you think's gonna win out in this uh this lane? It's oh! hard it's hard to say. I think uh it can definitely go either way. The Gooch Pooch just centimeters, millimeters. We'll see if they freeze the wave. They let the wave crash in. Usually when teams do that, you want to be able to freeze it. Oh, they do get a small freeze. This is really nice. And Vari is just constantly pushing this lane in. And this is what I mean where they don't necessarily know how to take advantage. Oh, oh speaking of taking advantage, it looks like Tom goes ahead and invades onto Dark Blaze. Dark Blaze is going to get this resonating strike. Oh, Did it ward off fast enough? Wukong able to hear the kill. That's first blood over to the pockets of the Wukong. Tom yeah. and the big bucks. You see the full click on the red side coming for the Lee Sin. I personally am not a fan of that pathing at all. It takes way too long. You saw Wukong, or Lee Sin finished it around 240, 245. Wolf's power farming junglers can finish a whole section of their jungle by 223. So okay. putting yourself behind tw 20 seconds, I personally... Ooh, ooh. actually lands the rocket grab. Having to use the Valkyrie to get on out of their Death Slayer, nice taunt to really prevent anything further from happening. Yeah, we see Wukong going to the blue, but potentially can gank. He has multiple options here, since so has no mana. Looks like they contest. spotted him? They question mark? I yeah, think they, they question I... mark. They kind of have a small understanding. They have a hunch. Yeah. We'll see if this Udyr decides to do some Chaos. Usually when Chaos is early game, it's all Udyrs, but I don't really see him doing much. He's kind of just standing in the lane. Really just trying to survive. Yeah, he definitely needs to start looking for the Wukong, and as I say that, he's getting ganked in the mid lane. Oh, here we go, Sen Headpads, getting extremely low, using the heal. Still has the barrier, Lee Sin going in. Tom having a lot of armor, though, this. just because of the win Wukong passive. Victor gets a nice auto. Oh, oh, oh Q auto, not enough. Is he going to be able to get it? Tom does, and he slays. 
Dark Blades one more time. I thought he was going to go for the Terror Dive. I was like, oh man, if there's anyone who can, it will possibly be the Wukong because of the armor. And here we go, Valkyrie going in. Justice Punch landing onto the bot lane of Boomer Boys. Gooch Pooch getting significant. No, not, not, not too low. And Wari did face a whole... Most of the most of the wrath of uh, Sunnyside Varsity bot lane. Yeah, off to a rough start for Sunnyside Varsity. Already behind 1k gold four minutes into the game. Although the gold is on Wukong, however, a little bit of a gold lead in the bot lane as well because Sivir is ahead in 9CS. Um, Lee Sin is even on CS with the Wukong, however. Bad. That's bad for the Lee Sin. The Wukong kind of. A bit of a counter to, to Lee Sin just because of all those passive stats. The armor passive. Would you say so? Um Yeah, it, it's pretty difficult for Lee Sin to try to open up in this game because of that Wukong passive. Yeah. Right, like he's not really able to duel. Yeah. They are hovering around Dragon. I'm going in. Oh, then Headbad just kind of sticking around, <laughs> looking to fully engage. Tom gets a nice double key proc. Well done. And Vari, ooh, taking a lot of damage. That E really does shred those bullets coming out of the Corky. Oh, Wigs and Rice stopping the knockup of the Scion. Yeah, I was going to say the, the Corky still shreds on that E, I believe, right? Yeah, it does. Ooh, it's Gatling Gun. So it does do a decent amount of damage, but something I wanted to point out is Sis going for the coal, and I mean, if you're in a tank matchup, I don't necessarily think what's bad about that. All right, it looks like it looks like Sunny's have varsity onto the ocean Drake immediately. Uh oh, Boomer Boys are converging. He does slay it right before Sand United comes in. Two flashes out com coming out of Sunnyside Varsity over the Dragon Pit Wall, trying to get to safety, and they do. Boomer was just a bit too late, and early Ocean going over to Sunnyside Varsity. Help him out a little bit in the lanes, especially for that Udi, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Udyr already has the Negatron, or not Negatron Cloak, sorry, no Magic Mantle and Ooh. the Ruby Crystal. Knock up onto the Cork, he does get the full damage of the Boomerang, Justice Punch coming over onto Anvari. Anvari having a heal, trying to get out of there. The base damage of Corky is just probably too much for the, the Sivir, but now Death Slayer getting extremely low. No flash available, and Rocket Grab, he says, get back here. We're not done with you. Oh, survives with how much? Probably like 50 HP. Well done. <laughs> well done on surviving, but Boomer Boy strike back. Making sure that they stay in this game and they stay ahead. Here we go. Nice cute wave forces. Then Headpats is coming over. A possible tower dive? Yeah, Sun Headpats wants to be looking for the Wukong instead of the laners. I think it's pretty impossible to gank the. Ion or the Sivir. Doesn't Yeah, as I talked about, Anvari, I talked about how they'll never win you the game, and now they're trying to just prove me wrong, right? <laughs> 100%. Oh, Tommy Gooch Booch. Is, doesn't quite land the unstoppable onslaught. Unfortunate. Now the Gooch Booch is going to have to go back with no assist. Then head pets. Taking quite a bit of poke, as we assume. He's doing it exactly that. Trying to match the wave clear. Make sure it doesn't shove in. And at the same time, he's trying to make sure that he doesn't lose too much life on top of it all. And Vari doing a pretty good job. Making sure he's getting all the CS, all the XP. Oh, uh, the Gooch Pooch is back. Dark Blaze is around, trying to take the blue buff. Uh oh, had a left game, but he is back immediately. No worries. Just a hiccup. Gooch Pooch does find out. Dark Blaze. Oh, nice dragon kick. Man. Going into both of them. Able to fend off Boomer Boys. Well done. And here we go. It looks like Tom was engaging onto the Udyr. Does get a nice Cyclone, knocking up Send Head Pets and. Goes down to Acolyte, more gold. Well done. Oh, 
Oh, the Rift Herald gets popped. I didn't even notice Rift Herald is on the red side. Boomer Boys getting a good amount of plays. And I think Tom gets the full solo gold for that. Well done. Sunny side varsity are gonna look to try to survive with a little less casualties. But speaking of that, Rocket Grab comes in. Spell Shield does nullify a little bit of the damage. Wow, but the Corky's base damage is just enough to match the Sivir. It's pretty, it's pretty crazy. Alright. Yeah. We see Lee Sun ahead in CS by 10 here, despite Tom having the early lead. We'll see when Dark Place can kind of translate that lead. It's a very small CS lead, but considering that Tom is looking for a gank here and Dark Place is going to be back on his bot side, it's going to just continue to grow. Here, Tom's trying to match a little bit of pressure for the top side. Rice is winning out. Did he catch him? I don't think he did. He looks like he's sticking around. Oh, huh? able to dash out of that knockup. And no, I don't believe he saw him. The slow triggers. The shield is down. The knockup coming up. Oh, fully charged Q. Tom comes out of the bush. And Exit Rice goes down. Yeah, I invested a lot of time. However, the dragon is spawning. Dark Blade or Exit Rice will have the ulti. That's perfectly fine. Just a nice recall and then run straight mm -hmm. over to the drag. Is getting some plates into his pockets. Doesn't have the tail leap. Unstoppable onslaught was used as well. Uh oh. And he's had varsity trying to engage onto the mid lane. Acolyte taking a, quite a bit of damage from the Corky. Able to survive though. Able, able to walk away. Corrupting pots. Make sure that he's alright. Oh, the Gooch Booch getting caught out. Nice insect. Is he going to be able to make it? No, he doesn't. Sunnyside Varsity capitalizes and takes a kill. Exit Rice delaying the recall of Sis, keeping him in the top lane. There is no rotations for the Scion on this Dragon. Mountain Dragon coming up. They are one man down. Are they going to be able to turn this around? Tom still having the Cyclone on deck. And Vari Boomerang trying to peel him out. Tom's clone getting engaged on. Oh, Chaos Storm with the spread. AoE damage. That Slayer goes down. Sand United is here to help him out that much more. It's Anvari's game to go ahead and take over the ricochets, the boomerangs. Unfortunately, they all do make it out. Rocket Grab doesn't quite land onto Eggs and Rice. Eggs and Rice slowed by the gravity field of Victor. And Boomer Boy is able to fend off Sunnyside Varsity from that dragon. Oh, Gucci Boots almost ca catching out one, one member of Sunnyside Jesus Varsity. still is looking for him. Well done, Gucci Boots. Oh, here comes the hero's entrance. He gets knocked over by the Blast Plant right into the arms of the Lee Sin. And the advantage just gets swung right back to Sunnyside Varsity. Yeah, only down 3k, about 2.5k gold now. Oh man. Well done, well done by, uh, by the Gooch Pooch. But unfortunately, he does go down further again, losing the lead. Or the advantage onto the Dragon, I say. I should say. Ions is able to pick up a lot of plates. He has a CS deficit, so those plates are definitely making sure that he's he's keeping up. Gravity field on Sin head fats. Um, um, Dead Slayer is around, possibly looking for a gank. Um, like he's trying to get that priority on the dragon. Oh, going into the jungle of Dark Blaze. Dark Blaze gets extremely chunked. Cyclone confirming the kill onto Tom. Eggs and Rice, meanwhile, on the top lane. Having his day against Scion. Looks like Shen hearts on Scion. Yeah, Quirky needs to get his item so he can start participating in this fight. We don't necessarily see the impact of like the care package yet, so I want to see if they can get a bigger fight off of that. He's disconnected once again. Oh, no worries, just a minor hiccup, no worries. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Dragon is taken by the Boomer Boys. Well done, Boomer Boys. Here we go, Infernal Soul. For the map, if you're, if, <laughs> Infernal Soul is always good when you want a lot of damage, so, 
What do you what do you think what, what do you think would have been the best drag for them though? Uh, for Sunny said this is probably the best dragon, right? Because Udyr is going to be doing mixed damage. I think he builds a little bit of hybrid. I've seen Sent Henpats play this Udyr before. He goes a little bit of AD and a little bit of AP, and so the dragon buffs both stats. It's great on Corky as well. For the side of Boomer Boys, I think you wanted the Air Drake because you already win in your composition. You already outscale the side of Sunny side, right? Yeah. So you don't necessarily need this big powerful dragon to win you the game. All that's doing is giving a potential win condition to Sunnyside, right? Say they sneak away a dragon here, a dragon there, and potentially get the soul. That's the only way actually Boomer Boys loses this game. Sparky does get stopped by that spell shield. Has a lot of base damage though. Was able to outtrade the Silver and the Blitzcrank. Rift Herald, second Rift. Ooh, Dark Blaze almost walking into the rocket grab. Yeah, I preferred if they would have waited a little bit on the second ref because now they're kind of on a tight timer for the next dragon. I think it's only 30 seconds over uh, when the dragon spawns, and you usually want to use this X Herald. Four minutes, correct? 240 seconds. Yep, yes. that's four minutes. Four minutes. So it's 30 seconds when, from when the next dragon spawns. Um, usually you want to take it a little bit later. It's just nitpicking here, but... Just want to make sure you have the most time possible when the dragon is spawned to make these plays because what that second herald does and what you see it used a lot in competitive play is when they it's used to get a dragon it's mm -hmm. not used to get any gold you're already going to you're already going to kill these towers you don't necessarily need more help since the plating is now down at for once you get the second herald right mm -hmm. so it just basically guarantees the next drake for you okay gotcha rift herald already oh, used. used early I don't think so. I think they're going for a massive push. Maybe they assumed all the Sunnyside Varsity was rotating to the top side. They are going to be able to answer, though, immediately. Yeah, if you're the sun side of Boomer Boys, though, you are ahead. So maybe they just want to force a fight, but Corky does have package here. Oh, Corky does come in with the package, as you were saying. Good switch uses static field, but immediately goes down. Cyclone comes out, stops the hero's entrance. Sand United is here, so it is a five-man. Oh, I believe it got stopped with the unstoppable onslaught. Boomer Boys now running amok. And completely win that team fight. Well done by Sizz. It almost looked like it was going to be a turnaround for the ages. Unfortunately for Sunnyside Varsity, they cannot. The Shen is stopped and he is stuck up in the top lane. Yeah, that was really unfortunate for the side of Sunnyside. And as I was talking about, right? Maybe they just felt like we're really ahead here. Let's just make our mark this game. Let's make sure we are the strong contenders for the first place spot, right? Because... Mm -hmm. There, it, as you were saying early on in the season, right? It was Boomer Boys and GZG for the top two spots, right? But when we saw Sunnyside beat Boomer Boys, it kind of made us rethink if our like preconceived notions coming into the season were gonna be completely wrong. But looking like Boomer Boys wants to make sure, hey man, it was just a fluke. We want to make sure we stop this game. So. <laughs> Our team, GCG, knows that they're coming for us, right? Yeah. I feel like that's the kind of statement they're making in this game. Incredibly well done <laughs> for the Boomer Boys, really turning it around. And yeah, I think I think uh, the aggressiveness really puts uh, some players on their heels, uh, left in uncomfortable spots in the game. Oh. What are you looking to engage? The Phoenix Dance doing a lot of damage. Dark Blaze is here. Dragon kicks and Vardy on Vardy further out, but Udi are able to tank all those turret shots. Boomer Boys are here though. The Calvary is here. Sonic Wave, Resident Strike. Oh, lands on a minion, tries to get out of there, but still goes down to Wukong and Wu and Tom is 8-1 and 4 on that Wukong. Really unfortunate. Here we see Death Slayer just clearing the wave mid lane. That's something that he does a lot is when he gets out rotated he just kind of commits to pushing in a wave which at least he is doing something the way he kind of plays support is basically like a second mid laner so the cs going to him isn't that bad it just oh. depends how he impacts the team fights right yeah and what Tom, he does with the gold i'm here cranking up the conqueror but the corky melting and shredding through tom's resistances it's that magic damage ad combo yeah, Corky, oh. still no strike force. Oh no. Sizz lands a nice knockup. No, does not converge on it because I believe a big one did land onto, onto Tom. Dragon is up. We'll see how they converge on it. Sunnyside Varsity definitely has the upper hand, especially with Tom being so low. 
Um doesn't have ulti for this fight. Since he used the top lane, this is pretty unfortunate. Might be the Dragon Force, and he's at Varsity. Oh, and some bubble onslaught comes in. Rocky grab onto the Corky, and Vari doing all kinds of damage with the Ricochet Boomerang. Hero's entrance does come in. Ziz unable to get a knockup. Tom, though, having the Cyclone, able to wait just long enough. The Dragon did go over to Sunnyside Varsity, but at what cost are they all going to go down? Rocky Grab comes out again. Eggs and Rice now the victim to the Blitzcrank pull. Pooch Pooch once more. Oh, no. Dragon kicked right on back. Knocks up two members of Boomer Boys, and that's a yet another win for Boomer Boys. Oh, I beg to get there for Ziz. Recalling in an unusual spot. Might fall oh, victim, and wow. he does. The Gooch was just here, though. Oh, they decide, hey, you know what? Cut our losses. Let's take that mid turret. Yeah, Boomer Boys does take the top tower as well, though. We'll see if Acolyte ends up getting picked here. Don't think he will. Shen does have TP for flank. If they decide to go for it. Oh, wow. That's, that, that just proves how strong Boomer Boys are. I think they won that 4v5, right? Oh, and Wari almost getting caught out. The Gooch Pooch does stop the Udyr. Udyr goes down. Then head pass guard. Oh, Dark Blaze does line onto the Gooch Pooch. Gooch Pooch is confirmed down. A lot of spread damage, AOE damage coming from the Corky. Really melting at all members of Boomer Boys here. It's a 4v3. They're looking for more. Oh, Scion telling. Nice telling into the mid lane. Acolyte's still here, looking for that Chaos Storm, potentially. Oh, it's on CD. Cyclone is up from the Wukong, however. Oh, and yep, as you say, it does trigger. Oh, wow. Unfortunately, he does go down. Sand United comes out to help out Death Slayer that much more. Stiz is walking on over. A Unstoppable Onslaught lands to Eggs and Rice. Double kill to Acolyte. So much damage coming out of that the scientist, the mad scientist. Oh, that's Singe. Sorry about that. <laughs> and Bari going down, unfortunately, to the Udyr. Then Headpass trying to do his best impression of Trick2G. Unfortunately, the gates that are being opened are his own. This gets a nice knockup onto Udyr, but as he stacks up those abilities, I think he gains uh, resistances, right? And movement speed. Yeah, I believe he does. See you right now. Oh, just attack speed and movement speed now. I thought he also did armor and magic with this. Max the bear stance and the phoenix stance. This man just wants to go fast. What I want to mention though is I feel like these team fights are going are a little too close for Boomer Boy's comforts. I know there is a huge 10k gold lead, but these team fights are still kind of close. Well, I, I well, think it's just not everyone from Boomer Boys is there, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's exactly what I was, I was gonna say. The, they're barely winning it out with one member less every single time. So I think that's perfectly fine. <laughs> but uh, they definitely could get the most out of it if they were probably all there, correct? Yeah, definitely. We see Lee Sun building Lethality. I usually don't like going that build unless you're absolutely ahead. A little strange coming out from uh, uh, coming out of Lee Sun. So behind, huh? Yeah, it is really unfortunate for him to go for that build. Oh, Wukong oh. using the Cyclone. Yeah, trying to use it defensively, really stopping the Lee Sin. Lee Sin does get caught out. Hero's entrance does come in, but Unstoppable Onslaught in return hits Dead Slayer, and Dead Slayer goes down. Acolyte is dominating. They are running down the three remaining members of Sunnyside Varsity. Oh, Eggs and Rice, the next victim to fall. Knock up. Chaos Storm slowly bleeding him out. And that might be game for Boomer Boys. Yeah, I think that might be it. Something I want to mention is what is Sunnyside even fighting for in that situation, right? There's not necessarily anything they need to do, but just get items onto this quirky. I think they're just trying to defend their jungle. Send Headpass trying to run away, get them off of there. Package used to go ahead and eat up the wave, but the Rocky Grab confirms the win! Send Headpass just running on off, does not want to see his Nexus go down to a team that they had beat. And that is game. Boomer Boys take it. And do they take the second spot then? They're one yep. and one, right? Yep, that confirms it, I believe, right? How would that work? It is double round robin. They confirm it. Wouldn't there be a tiebreaker for the spot? Or do we just give it to the... No, there is no tiebreaker. It's a four. They're both four and three currently in the standings, I believe. Yep. Oh, that's right. Yep. Okay, so it'll be four and four, Sunnyside Varsity, five and three. Boomer boys. Yeah, the only tiebreaker okay. scenario we have is if free agents beat Sunnyside JV on this next match. Oh, and that'll be two and six, and then that would cause a tiebreaker in itself for them, yep. correct? Yep. 
All right, player of the game. While I'm doing while I'm doing the player of the game, talk to me about what we just saw and who you think player of the game is. Uh, I think Sunnyside wasn't as disciplined as they should have been with that comp. They didn't really take advantage how obnoxious it is early game, right? Wukong was making the proactive plays. I thought it was an interesting path from the. Then it was a lot of pressure for Dark Blaze. But props for Boomer Boys being able to just completely shut down Sunnyside's game plan, right? Not really getting phased by the weird picks. They're just going to play their game, and that's what they did, right? Tom getting a really nice lead. Solo killing Dark Blaze in his own jungle. Um, Blitz, <laughs> Blitzcrank with a gooch pooch just hitting a lot of clutch hooks. And as I was talking about early in the broadcast, where I don't necessarily feel like they know how to take advantage <clears throat> of when the enemy opponent has a weak lane, they just pick Blitzcrank, and it's like... Hey, if we land this hook, you're guaranteed dead, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a mechanic test at that point. It's no longer uh, how can you manage the wave? How can you like abuse the HP lead? How can you transition into the enemy jungle? It's like, if I land this god hook, it's over. And Gooch Bitch was <laughs> landing so many of those, right? Yeah. So, for you, for you who, who was your MVP of the game? Or did you, do you want to wait until after the voting? No, no, no. Let's go ahead and do the voting. I will leave it up for another three minutes. Mm -hmm. uh, the... The vote, uh, as far as my vote for player of the game, I'll probably give it over to Tom just because he was able to nullify the early aggression of Dark Blaze in turn. He was doing a lot of the aggression. Uh, Blitzcrank, Blitzcrank, he was uh, <laughs> uh, the Gooch Pooch. Mm -hmm. He was grabbing a lot of them feet <laughs> yeah. from the opposite side. You know, Sunnyside Varsity unfortunately did fall victim quite a few times to the Blitz Pool. Uh, so if anything, it would be either between him or Tom. Yeah, I definitely think I. Probably would have went Tom because that clear was just so crisp, right? The red into wolves into blue. Yeah. Knowing that despite the level advantage, usually you don't see a lot of junglers do that where they know they're going to be down a level, right? He went into Raptors. Maybe he didn't anticipate them being there, but he had so much confidence in like, okay, I win this despite the level disadvantage. Just knowing that instantly is incredible for me. Yeah. Right? Because it is, it is confidence. It's the understanding of your champion, understanding of enemy champion, understanding of clear, right? Yeah. If he did know he was there, which wouldn't be surprising because Dark Blaze does do that path quite often, where he just full clears one side of his jungle. He never does anything that like Tom does, right? Like Tom goes for really weird, like I will do. It's never the same. Yeah, it's it's never the same, right? It's yeah. very similar to kind of like decency. The only other player that I know kind of does that type of pathing is like decency. It's like a a, a lot more crisp style of de decency, right? Because. Decency, we saw his flaws is after the first clear, he kind of got lost in the sauce. And Tom just instantly knowing what to do, right? Even in the bait mid lane where he made everyone go follow him and just baited everyone into the river as his team was just waiting there. They're having a barbecue in the river, man. <laughs> and Tom was just like, hey, guys, come to the barbecue. And Sunny Sun Varsity was like, hey, man, I want to go to the barbecue and just completely ace games over. Yeah. Right? <laughs> like, that, that's really crisp to say. Yeah. Definitely. I'll probably mm -hmm. give Decency a little bit more credit. After the first clear, I think he actually uh, goes extremely, is like extremely elite all the way towards like the mid game where you got to kind of yeah. really communicate what you want to do. You yeah, know what I definitely, mean? Definitely. Yeah. I think that's where, I, I, I think that's where he would probably fall to. I, I wasn't trying to discredit it because it's, I, I think, he, it's, no, 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 it's not. I know. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't thinking you were discrediting. I'm just saying, I, I truly believe that his path timing is, is a, a lot better than just the first, than just the first clear. Yeah, true. Um, yeah, but I just wanted to mention how, like, Tom's was... It's, like, kind of the same type of play style, but, like, a lot crisper, right? Yeah. So, it, it's just really cool to see how, like, some people have similar play styles. And, um, kind of see how, like... I don't know, man. Like, jungle's just so amazing when you see someone super confident. Yeah. I just love seeing that, honestly. Yeah, 100%. I feel it. And, like, the, <laughs> the only people I can see... I can see that, like... Plays super confident besides Tom is like decency. So that's why I had to bring up his name. Decency, if you're in the chat, man, like his play style is extremely confident. I can't really, I can't really think of anybody else who has a very confident play style in the jungle currently. Mm. Who would be a? Uh, would be another one. I think me. Nah. <laughs> uh, real like aggressive type of style. I'm not. I'm not too sure. The same way as the uh, as the well, same way as decency. I think he's probably. Mm -hmm. I think he's probably in line with Dark Blaze. It's just him, Dark Blaze. To be honest, yeah. yeah. I think those. I think those are definitely the two. <sighs> the two junglers. <laughs> FFM. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Let's see. 
who is MVP. The Gooch Pooch. We got 11 <laughs> votes for the Gooch Pooch. Those rocket grabs were definitely <laughs> a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, we'll cut off the, the votes right there. Yeah, this makes me really excited for playoffs. I know we're not doing double a limb, but man, makes me excited for playoffs. How much more um, Boomer Boys is going to reveal, right? Yeah. Because how it's looking like is they got a lot of different strats in the end of the like. They, they just have a giant encyclopedia of just strategies, I feel like, right? Yeah. Because you thought, at least for me, for me personally, right? Yeah. I thought if Gooch if you take away his Leona, his Morgana, he didn't necessarily have anything. Mm. Then he pulls out the Blitzcrank, and although he didn't win the game yesterday on the champion, I thought he performed really well. Like, I was getting caught up <laughs> over walls. I didn't think they had wards. I even bought Umbral Blade because I was like, I'm tired of... I was just paranoid of everywhere I was walking. I was like, is there a ward here? Is there a ward here? I bought Umbral Glaive on Kindred because of how scared I was that this man was just going to continuously hook me over walls. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was having a lot of success in that. <laughs> yeah, so it's a question of, like, how much more do they have, right? Yeah. With Tom in the jungle, pulling out the Fizz jungle again, although it wasn't successful, like, just the fact that they're willing to pull that out, you never know when it ends. You know, it's like that magician when he gets, like, a bunch of different colored flags out of his, um, like, jacket. It's just, continu like, never ending. That's how I feel when um, Boomer Boys comes up with drafts and, like, different types of drafts. I think uh, the Gooch Pooch... Uh... Has found yet another champion to be banned. <laughs> yep. It's like pick your poison. You want the Leona, you want the Morgana, or do you want <laughs> the Blitzcrank? Kind of has a trio of just nice engages, really starting the fights. Mm -hmm. And uh, on top of that, even essentially a little bit of a peel uh, aspect to them, mm -hmm. if used correctly. Yeah, so. he does peel pretty well on the champion as well. 100%. Hooking people away, just standing on top of the AD carry just to make sure he like buys a little bit more time for him, right? Yeah, exactly. So, well done to the Gooch Pooch player of the game. I think that's the second one this season. Hopefully more to come in the playoffs. Is Tom still the leader in the player of the games? Yes, right? I think Gooch Pooch has two. Uh, I think Tom started off strong with, like... There's eight matches, so the that first means Tom three. has six, right? Or did Acolyte win one? I thought I, it was just... Well, they only have five wins. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah, so, so two to Gooch Pooch, and I think all the rest are to Tom. Because I think if I remember correctly, the first three games they had, uh, Tom was de the, the definite MVP. Yeah. Yeah. So there you go. He, he had the... He had the Tristana, he had the Jin game. Two Jin games, right? Or yeah. was it the Kaisa game? No, Kaisa game was a game. Oh, I think Tom is saying the, the uh, Gooch has three, he okay. believes. So that's two was, to yeah. Tom, and then that means three, three to Gooch. Gooch. Yeah, because I was so having trouble really... thinking of the third game, right? Yeah. Because there was a lot of games where Tom just kind of showed that he was completely dominant over the enemy laner, and it was kind of hard not to give him a vote. Mm -hmm. And now we see Gooch Pooch ahead in the votes on that team. I think he might be ahead in the league, right? Because although our team has more wins, everyone gets a different type of... Everyone gets a, <laughs> wins the vote. Every, like, a different person from our team always wins the vote, right? Uh, yeah, I think Hostile Avocado has one or two. I think Alba, Albase has another one. I yeah. know you have two, right? Albase has two. Albase has two. You have two. So. And then Hostile has two. And then T4D with the Rock at one. Okay. So that's a total of the seven? Yeah, that's the seven, right? Okay. Two, 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 two. All right. Oh. So Gooch is currently leading the MVP race. That's pretty sick.